hi everyone it's me crystal welcome back to my channel if you've been here before if not welcome for the very first time to my little art corner here on youtube today i'm going to be playing around with the daniel smith watercolors that came in the january 2021 palette full packs box for this project i decided to paint a tulip mostly just because of the colors that we got i don't usually use masking fluid but we decided to try it out this is some daniel smith artist masking fluid I do like the little container it came in and the fact that it has a fine tip where you can easily do lines. This way you don't necessarily have to mess up a brush while using it. And I'm just using that anywhere where I initially think that I want a highlight to go. I did have to wait quite a while for the masking fluid to dry and I'm not gonna lie, I got a little bit impatient while doing this project just for waiting for everything to dry because I didn't pull in a hair dryer today. After that masking fluid is dry, I go in with some of the Daniel Smith paint. I start with the wonderful petals that we have going on in our tulip here. And for right now, I'm just layering in the Rose of Ultramarine. I really like this color. I enjoyed how opaque it got, and then you can get it really nice and light. It applied beautifully. I love Daniel Smith watercolors. I don't have a lot of them. I've gotten a couple through subscription boxes, and every time I use them, I'm super happy with them. After getting my washes in for the petals, I decided to go in on the stem, and I'm just using the Viridian color for that. As the description stated, it is very translucent. I took quite a few layers for it to get even semi-opaque, but it was wonderful for layering over the other two paint colors. After doing that, I jump back into the petals of the flower to get some lines in there, and I do a little bit of an outline for the petals past where I have the areas that I want to stay white. At this point, I start layering the Mayan Blue Genuine over the stem, and I start pulling it into the petals of the flower as well. For certain areas where I want it really light, I'm pulling in a lot of water. In the petals itself, there is a bunch of water laying on top of that paper, and it is not quite dry up. But even with that, I'm still able to pull in some lines. Pretty sure I've said this in previous videos. I used to hate watercolor, but now I enjoy it. I like how it flows. I like the mixture. And I love some of the beautiful mistakes you can get with it, as we'll see later in this painting. I did start pulling up some of the masking fluid way too early here. You should definitely wait until your layers are dry before you do it. I was just apparently very impatient today, and it did mess up certain areas, but I like where it went with the mistakes. I do also want to take a moment to point out like how satisfying it is to pull up masking fluid. There's just something about it that makes me happy inside. And here, pretty soon, after I fill in the area that just got pulled back from the masking fluid is where I mess up. I make a little splatter where the paint kind of goes in a different way. And I decided to go with it and just create a bunch of little watercolor splatters and washes around the flower itself in the same colors. Doing this part was actually a lot of fun. It was something that... I needed to do that I didn't realize I needed to do, if that makes any sense. Emotionally, it was just satisfying. I just needed to focus in on it and let the watercolor do what it wanted to do. To do the splatters, I'm using a lot of water mixed in with the paint, and for these small little bits, I am pulling the bristles of the brush towards me and letting it flick onto the paper. Since I mentioned the brush, I do want to point out that the Sterling Studio round brush in size 6 that we got in this month's box, I really like it. I was able to get some really nice fine lines with it, but I could also fill up a large bit of space if necessary. It's a very versatile brush. At this point in the painting, I start peeling back even more of the masking fluid that I had in the petals, and I'm just pulling in more watercolor on top of it to add some light washes there. After filling in some of the light washes, I am going in with less water and creating even more lines. I'm also having a bunch of fun creating all the messy bits. I really enjoy the color selection that they chose for January. I just think they all work really beautifully together and it's just a soft, muted, lovely palette. I'm very excited to add these watercolors to my collection because of the quality and the color selection itself. If there's a splatter I don't like, while it's still really wet, I just pull in a paper towel and pick it right back up. 
Another good thing about these watercolors is that they re-wet very well, so if it's dried up in my palette there, just adding a little bit of water helps it go a long way. Overall, I'm very happy with the January 2021 Palette Full Packs box. I know I'm going to use these watercolors again. I liked the paper, I liked the brush, the little palette is nice and convenient. And once I get a handle on the masking fluid and actually wait for everything to dry properly, I shall be a force to be reckoned with. But with that, this project and therefore this video are pretty much done. If you liked it, please hit that like button. If you have any comments, questions, feelings, concerns, or you've used any of the items in this month's box, let me know all about that in the comment section down below. If you would like to see more videos like this, please feel free to subscribe. I do palletful packs, unboxings, and projects once a month. As always, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day or night to watch this video and listen to me ramble. I greatly appreciate it. I look forward to hearing from you guys soon, and you will most definitely be hearing from me soon. Bye, everybody!